Hello, and welcome to Unexplored Games, a channel dedicated to lesser known and unique board games. Today we're talking about a game called Psycho Raiders. It's from Emperors of Eternal Evil, who might be better known for um, Cave Evil, which is another kind of metal-themed game. I don't know much about it other than it's been recommended to me as something that is a little more unique. This game, Psycho Raiders, is a one of their uh, Halloween Nightmare Horror Game magazine series. Kind of a mouthful there. It's issue one in that series. And it, all of these games come in a magazine form with the rules and some art in the back, as well as um, sheets that you're going to have to cut out yourself. And in this case, character sheets that you have to print out or photocopy from the inside. Some of the other games in this series are Sea Evil, Freak Face, and a game called Don't Let the Wolves Eat Our Baby, which was a collaboration with Fangoria magazine. Uh, and that's now a print and play. You can go on their website and, and print it out. I'll post links to both Psycho Raiders, um, Don't Let the Wolves Eat Our Baby, and the main store page for, for this company. These are all available now, I believe. Uh, nothing is out of print as far as I know. Before I go any further, I would like to do a quick disclaimer using the website here, um, using their language. There's a, some art in this game that's a little gory, maybe a little, little upsetting, so I wanted to quickly give a heads up for anyone that uh, doesn't want to see some uh, drawn depictions of gore. Um, as this page says, Psycho Raiders is a very visceral experience, and we have rated it X. Anyone under the age of 18 is not permitted to play. Pregnant or players with fragile or nervous dispositions are strongly encouraged not to play this game. And that kind of fits with the theme of this game. It's a slasher. It's, uh, it's meant to evoke all of the feelings of a slasher. It's a great game for Halloween, which is right around the corner. And I want to start with going over the, the kind of unique magazine that we have here. As you can see, it's a, it's a normal magazine, and it's kind of like a punk zine, or if you're familiar with like kind of indie zines in general, you might get from your record store or your comic book store. Um, you open it up, at, you know, there's a, a demon looking thing here with some old English script uh, to evoke those same feelings. Starts with a comic telling you the backstory, and then the rules. Um, as you go in, you have some, some comics and some fake ads for various things, and the Here's those cards I mentioned. And in the back you have like a, not, not the best horror story I've read and some comics. This one's particularly kind of cool looking. I'm a big fan of that art. But in general, it really feels like a punk zine met a slasher film and had a board game baby. It's kind of cool. Um, and that's really the, the, the coolest part about this game is the slasher flick feeling that comes out from all the mechanics as well. Uh, there are two different groups of players. You're playing as a group of teenagers who are three campers who are trying to escape the Psycho Raiders. And the goal of the game is to move from this end to the map, one, one teenager from this end to the map to the other. That one teenager bit of information is pretty important because this game is intentionally unbalanced. It's not meant to be this grand Euro game style uh, intellectual battle between two players. It says you can play up to seven. I wouldn't recommend that high of a player account because your team, your, your campers will die. Like that's kind of the goal of the game. They're not going to win. It's not meant to be something that's easily winnable by the quote unquote good guys. And it does a good job because of that unbalanced nature. It does a good job of evoking a slasher film. You don't go into a slasher film and see the teens immediately you know, win and, or, or even win at the end. Some movies don't have anyone surviving at the end. And this does a good job of kind of replicating that feeling and that experience. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end or about my impressions and how I feel about it um, and how people I've played with feel about that. Uh, but I still like the game. I think it's kind of cool. The game has a number of characters to play who are split up into three groups. The Psycho Raiders, who are the villains of the story. The Campers, who are the, not to say heroes, but the quote-unquote good guys. And the Townsfolk, who are neutral until a couple of events happen. 
When you set up the game, you'll have one group of your players choose to be the Psycho Raiders, whose goal is to kill all three of the campers, your other group of players. Their goal is to have one camper survive and go out from the bottom of the map off to the top of the map. As the campers go on, they are able to scream and alert the various townspeople to join their cause, which is really nice, especially because the campers likely will die. So if, let's say, the player playing Don dies, but Randy screams to the sheriff, the player playing Don can take over the sheriff's character. But as we'll see in a minute, the sheriff isn't always on the camper's side. So the game starts with the Psycho Raiders, the bad guys, rolling to see which one of these town people might become on their side later in the game. You have all of these people throughout the map who are stationed on their various locations. Uh, and in the very beginning, there's a chance that the Psycho Raiders might be able to control them later. It creates these stories where you have your Randy, let's say, is you know up here going to the gas station, and the mechanics helping him out, and the... He, he got called in by Randy screaming earlier in the game, and the campers are controlling the mechanic. Maybe they're getting him in his car to go pick up the other, uh, the other campers um, to get them off the map at the top. But then in the middle of their turn, when the, the player playing the camper says, you know, and then the mechanic does this, the Raiders can say, well, you know what? In the very beginning, we rolled, and he's actually on our side. So please give us the card and he instead of helping you out draws his you know knife whatever he found in the gas station and cuts your cuts randy in the arm and randy's you know no longer able to move as much or something and it creates this cool story where there's this twist in the middle that the the campers are feeling like they're doing a good job but then suddenly things change and the raiders have a different plan for you on top of that, there's these once-per-game raider abilities. One of them I think is really cool. It's appear anywhere. Halloween supernatural powers allow one raider to appear on any hex space on the board. Uh, and that allows like a Jason-style jump from going from this spot to up here where, where Randy somehow ran away to, but now a raider's right behind him or right in front of where he's trying to go. And it really adds to the overall theme and the overall feel that you really are in a slasher movie. I want to go over some of the base mechanics, a little bit of combat, maybe maybe some movement and hiding. Hiding super important. Um, I want to go over a couple of those, and as I do, I want to talk a little bit more about how these mechanics really make it feel like a slasher movie and how they play into that whole. They really lean into that whole slasher flick, imbalanced feel of the game. When you start the game. The campers are in their truck here and the raiders are in their van and the campers get to move first and go ahead and try to drive away and the raiders are chasing you on. And it starts off in this tense moment of, of chase, which is really fun, especially because the raiders can end up ramming the truck. And I think the last time I played by myself, what happened is these campers, that on their first turn, they drove all the way up here and then flipped their truck over and everyone got hurt. Like immediately. And then the Raiders, I think, you know, ended up killing everyone I hear. Uh, because it's unbalanced, and because it's intentionally meant to f uh, evoke fear for your campers. They're not supposed to survive. They're not supposed to feel comfortable. I wanted to do a quick example of combat to show how the combat mechanics really play into the slasher feel of the game and how they make it feel even more hopeless for these campers. So I just want to do a, a combat here. Let's say Fluke had moved into here and did combat. If you look at their character sheets, you'll see that Fluke's strength is quite high, especially when you compare it to Dawn. And strength is one of the ways that you uh, determine damage in Psycho Raiders. So in this example, Fluke and Dawn are going to battle here. All you got to do is you each choose a weapon. In this case, Fluke has a battle mace and a shield, we're going to use the battle mace in this example. And Dawn, unfortunately, doesn't have anything. So if you can see here on the battle mace, it says a 4 at the very bottom, and then you add strength. Um, so 4 plus his 6 on there is 10. Then you roll a die. So we're at 15 for Fluke. Dawn has a strength of 3, and all we're going to do is add her 1 to her 3. There's rules about natural 1s and it makes it even worse for the players, but I won't go over those now. So we have 15 versus Dawn's 
four. So that's nine damage we have to deal with here, which is quite a bit. Zooming in on Dawn here, we can see that her stats are six, three, and four. So if we have to remove nine, let's get rid of her will to live, mostly to keep her strength and speed up. And, oh, is it nine? It was 15 to four? That's 11. Oh no. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So <laughs> 11 minus four is 11, 10, nine, eight, seven. That's what I thought. So we're going to take away maybe, let's do leave her with one strength. So that's five left and one speed. Whew, that is pretty rough. That means that Dawn really does kind of look like her character sheet here. She is dragging herself away. And that's a pretty cool um, mechanic that when these raiders attack you, you are really dragging yourself away. Like, let's say at the end of a horror movie or when your favorite one of the, the campers are coming and they're the ones who are about to die. Um, it really adds to the feel of this game. If Dawn were to reduce all of her points to zero, she'd draw one of these cards from the kill deck, which is, uh, as you'll see in a minute, the, where a lot of the gore, uh, the graphic imagery really lies. Um, you'll see that there are various ways. This is don't look. That's kind of a, an interesting one. There are various ways your characters can die. Um, pretty gruesome art. I don't want to show too many in case you don't like that kind of stuff. But it, uh, again, adds to the story if you, you know, she gets attacked by this, this fluke character and then, you know, she lies in a puddle of blood or something and that's how she dies. Just like something you'd see in a slasher. It is great for that. When I play, I don't mind losing because I'm trying to imagine this playing out like a slasher movie. I'm not trying to win as the as the um, the campers. Maybe I win, maybe I don't, but that's not really my goal. My goal is to have this great experience, to have this emergent storytelling. When I played this last time, I was playing and I was being the Raiders and who I was playing with was, was playing the um, the campers. And we got close to the end. The campers were getting close, but they were all dying. One by one, they fell off. And you have this one camper up there who's almost there. Just like uh, whoever it is in a slasher movie, when they're finally at the end, they're almost getting there. And then you never know, maybe the next turn, the raider uses their appear anywhere action and pops right in front of you. Terrifying. It really creates that slasher feel really, really well. But some people don't like that imbalance. I want to say that half the people I've played with have probably not enjoyed the fact that they knew they were going to lose, that it was um, almost, uh, it just didn't feel possible. I don't want to use the word impossible, but they felt like it wasn't possible to win. And I, I agree, that feeling is definitely there, and that feeling of helplessness is there. Uh, but it's also like, that's kind of the point. The point is to feel scared as these campers. The point is that these raiders are overpowered and they're gonna get at you. And that feeling of despair and horror is really exemplified in these, in these cards, these cards that come with the game that when you get killed, you have to draw and match these symbols, but they're just these gruesome images of like just this artistic depiction of gore. And it's like a, you know, one of those grindhouse movies from the seventies. I like playing this game. I think it's great to pull out for Halloween, but you gotta, like I said earlier, you have to be aware of who you're playing with. If you're playing with people who are really diehard about winning or don't like the feeling of like not having a viable turn, it's not, it's not a good game to play with them. But I would recommend playing this on Halloween. Uh, I like this game and I've played it probably five times in the past couple days. I'm ready to put it away. I might bring it out on Halloween and then maybe bring it out around Halloween every year. It's not an everyday game, but I love owning it. It's a really unique... When I first bought it, I talked to a friend of mine who's not into board games, but he is also into like outsider art. And we talked about how this feels like a piece of outsider art, something that isn't your everyday game, something that is there to evoke feeling and evoke thought and not necessarily be mechanically sound. And that's really what it is. It's this great slasher feeling. Uh, 
it's available. I've actually seen it at my local game store. They had a copy watch that I was surprised by. I suggest picking it up. It's pretty cheap and it's a lot of fun if you're looking for something that evokes a feeling rather than being like a usually or a very well balanced game. And that's it for Psycho Raiders. I didn't go too far in depth. There's a lot more rules there, just like any magazine game. But it's something that I like. You heard my feelings on it. I think it's kind of a, a neat little magazine game. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to be out of town next weekend at Gen Con. So I've been planning on uploading these videos maybe once a week, but I'm probably going to skip next week. And then after that, I'm going to try to upload once a week or maybe every other week. Uh, I have a few games lined up that I'd like to film. Um, I think the next one I'm going to do is a game, a solitaire um, war game called Cruel Necessity. That is kind of cool. It has these wooden pieces. And then after that, there's a couple games I'm picking up at Gen Con. Navajo Wars, another solo game. Um, and then as well as Nenga Parbat, which um, I thought was a cool theme that I'd never seen before that I want to do a video on. And then after that, I have a URL in the description of all the games that I plan to cover soon. Um, I was hoping to get a little bit of feedback on how much I should, um, how many war games I should cover, how many solo games I should cover, and how many just generic board games. I have ideas for a lot of these. I have some games that I'm looking out for that I want to buy, that I want to play, not only for the channel, but just in general, that I think would work well with the channel, that fit into all those categories. So I'm um, going to try to like mix it up, but if there's one category that y'all think is better than others for these videos, then I'll try to do those. Again, thank you for watching.